Hey, what's up? This is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, I'm going to show you how I added Auth to a Phoenix Live View app. This Live View app is called Reactor, and as you can see, uh, it has users, and it's also got uh, podcast data, and there, there are a lot of uh, things in here, but everything related to users is using Phoenix Live View where it was until I added auth. So just so you can see how it works, got a sign in button and I'll sign in as a certain user, ASDF, ASDF, ASDF. And actually I think that had to be the email, ASDF at example.com. So you can see we've got flash here showing that there was a mistake in the auth, welcome back. And now that you can see we're logged in, we have uh, basically access to the same things because this user is not an admin user. However, if I log in with one that is an admin user, we'll see Alchemist Camp, and I've still got ASDF, ASDF as my password. Now, looking at a user, I can see additional information, and I can go back to a listing of all the users. On the podcast page, I have access to new podcast. So, all I'm going to go over is how I did all of this. And there's a fair amount that is in common with any app where you make auth or any Phoenix app, I should say. So that's why I'm not going to type everything out this time. I'm just going to go over the changes in my Visual Studio code. You can see the files that I had to add for auth are in blue and everything I've updated over here is in yellow. So I'm just going to go through everything, starting with a mix file mix file. I added come on in, which is a library for doing auth and argon to elixir, which is a basically a sub library for the hashing. And if you're not familiar with how auth works for just a normal Phoenix app, you might want to check out the StatWatch project, or if you're an Alchemist camp member, you can go check out the CMS project or the Phoenix 1.4 chat server project. All right, so that's it for the mix file. In the accounts context, I added a new file called email, really not doing much. We've just got a, a band function that uh, returns whether or not if a given email is banned. Anytime you've got an open auth system where you're not using like say a third party like Google or Facebook or something uh, for the login, you're going to have some percentage of users, usually a low one, but some that just make things a pain. You want to be able to ban them. And as a site gets more popular, you'll need something more sophisticated than this for sure. In users, we didn't have to change too much. We added come on in argon and added a login hash string for when people forget their passwords. Then we've also added password and password confirmation. And both of those are virtual fields. So people enter them, but there's nothing for them on the database. Added a password hash which is written to the database. Then the change set hasn't changed at all, but we've got a new registration change set that does everything the change set does, and then also collects the password and password confirmation and uh, does the or calls the hash password function. And that password is created here. And we basically just uh, make sure that there is a password. In other words, the uh, password and password confirmation were both there. They both matched, so we made it to the bottom of the registration change set. And then we use argon2 to generate a password salt from the password, and we put that into the change set. So for normal changes, we've still got our change set. Then for changes involving passwords, we've got a registration change set. There's a very similar one called the token change set, which is for making a login token. Uh, we're not really going to go into that, go into detail with that today. Uh, as I said, this is all stuff that you would do in a, in a non live view app. Then in plugs, this off module is very standard and should look familiar to you if you've gone through my previous series, or if you've read the pragmatic bookshelf programming Phoenix, same kind of deal. The most important part of it is this call. Basically, anytime you use it as a plug, it's going to go through this call. We'll check both the session and the current assigns for the user. 
Uh, if there already is a user, then we'll just keep that current user assigned. If not, we'll look in the session, use the user ID to get the user out of the database from the accounts context. Then we put that data into the con. And let's see here, scrolling down, you can see we assign the current user. And this is going to be the whole user struct. So we'll have, uh, you know, we'll, ha we'll have access to everything in the user. And we'll also assign a Boolean true or false, whether or not they have admin privileges. Then finally, we've got this token, which is going to be very important for, uh, for the live view portion of this. And we assign that. And drop current user is the opposite of that. Uh, we have a few function plugs in here for dealing with a logged in user. So you can see if we go through this logged in user function plug and there is a current user in the, in the con at all, then we just continue on. And if there isn't one, then they get stopped with you must be logged in to access that and it get redirected somewhere. Got a similar kind of function for authenticate admin with both the happy path up here that just uh, continues the con as it was and the not so happy path here that halts them. And it is admin function that just uses that site admins. And, and this is where you would replace it with something more sophisticated if you need to. We've got a login function that uses the put current user we just went over. And it also puts a user ID in a session and configures a session to renew. Log out does uh, just, just the drop current user functionality and that's all at this point. So as I said, pretty standard auth plug. Then we can use that auth plug in uh, any of our controllers or even our live views where we need to. Uh, I'm gonna go over the live view part in a moment. Inside accounts, uh, I added a few functions like authenticate by email and password. It, it's using the same Argon2 library. I'll just scroll up here. You can see I'm still, still using come on in Argon2. We've got check password, dummy check password, which is just to uh, uh, use the same amount, of, same amount of time as if there actually were a password being checked. Uh, given an email, given a password, we see if it's banned, and if so, then it's unauthorized, but we don't, we don't reveal there's anything special about this account. Then if we were able to retrieve a user by that email, which is just you know querying the database by the email field, and they have given a password that hashes correctly to the user.password hash, then we return the user. Otherwise, unauthorized error, and then there's just a, a fallback. If anything else goes wrong, we pretend to check the password and then say not found and authenticate by token, same kind of thing. All right, going on to the controllers, you can see I've added a session controller. Then the session controller is really just a standard controller. This new here renders the same template we just looked at, login, and you can see uh, the form here. When that form is submitted, we use the accounts.authenticate by email password function we just looked at. We put a flash in welcoming the user, put the user ID in the session, set it to renew, and then redirect. And you know, otherwise we just put up a, a different flash and keep them on the same page. This is completely standard. And that's because it's a really bad idea to do your login through Live View itself. So if you're doing it through Live View, you can't assign anything into the con. So you'll lose uh, your, your login state as soon as you go to any page that's not in live view. So basically once you have one hard page load anywhere, you're logged out again. And it's, it's just kind of a weird way to do it. So you want to do the login from the back end part, not from the live view. And that's totally fine for this kind of sign in page. There is one case though, when we go to users new, when we create a new user, it's going to be logging you in and we're not going to have access to the, to the con since it is a live view. Let me just go back there, unlogged in. Okay, so we'll make a new user and we'll just call it LKJ and example.com and create. When we do this, 
going to hit a different route that I've created just for this. So see, we're logged in and everything is still available in live view. We can hit the main page, doesn't log us out. We can still go back here, refresh everything from our user and, and we can edit the user. Everything is still live view. So how do we do that? The way it works is we use a login token. So if we go to user live new, you see we've got this handle event function for when we submit the form to save the user. And as long as the parameters were good and we've successfully created a user, we create a token. And this token is for logging in. I'll just show you the function here. It's just 40 random bytes that we then URL encode. And there'll be a reason for that I'll explain in a moment. Once we've got that login token, we update the user with basically just a special update change set that is just for updating a token. So we go to this, you can see it's just the login token and nothing else on the user is changing. Uh, earlier in the video, you saw a login hash. I decided to rename that as login token just for consistency elsewhere in the app. So uh, this will just update that one attribute on the user. Then once that's updated, we put a flash that the user has been created and then we redirect to a different session path. This one is create from token. And this session path is used for logging in from a login token as opposed to somebody just entering their password and email on the site. So this is what you would use for uh, reset password requests. If someone forgets their password, you can also use it for this use case. So let's take a look at our session controller. And in our session controller, you can see we've got our standard create with email and password, and then an almost identical one here where we're authenticating by email token. And notice that it's got an email in it and a token in it. So we've got both in the route going back here to the, uh, to the redirect. You can see there's socket create from token. We're passing both the token and the email. So both of those will be in the URL. Let's look at the router here. And you can see login slash token slash email email. So in order to log in, someone has to have uh, requested the token or just signed up for a new account. And the token has to be associated with the user that has the same email that's in that URL. Going back to the session controller, you can see uh, we've once we've logged in, once we've authenticated the user, we just log in the exact same way as we normally would. And then we do a redirect to routes live path con reactor web user live show in the user. So to summarize, when we create a new user, we're doing it from user new, which is a live route. After we fill in the user's information and hit save, that will create a new user on the back end. And since it's not a good idea to log in from the back end, but we want the user to be logged in, instead we create a login token and then redirect to a non-live view route with that token and the newly created user's email, use that to auth them on the back end, and then redirect back to the page of the newly created user. And they are now logged in across the entire app. Let's briefly look at the other things in the app that I've changed or that I added. User controller, I actually thought that I would need, but since it's login from token is actually just creating a session from the token, since log, login is a session, uh, we didn't even need a user controller at all. So I'm going to delete that. The index page you see has this user ID inside the session. Remember each mount in a live view takes param, session, and socket. Since we set the user ID on the session when we log in, you can see that in uh, the session controller where we just were, we put session user ID, user ID. Unlike the con assigns, this session is available in our live views. So in order to get the same uh, current user and admin user assigns, what we do is we check to see if this user ID is here. If it is there, then we use that ID to get the user out of the database and we get see if they're an admin or not just by using that auth 
is admin function I showed earlier, which just checks against the list of admin emails. And if there isn't a user ID in the session, then we just assign current user nil and admin user nil to the socket so that when we're in our live view templates, we can still use that same at sign current underscore user and at sign admin underscore user. In the show route, we have the same kind of logic, getting the user ID out of the socket. If it's not there, then we assign current user nil, admin user nil. If it is there, we get the user from the database and check if they're an admin and pass the appropriate assigns onto the template. Uh, this is not exactly the same as our index page though. So notice the index page has to subscribe to the accounts context because the index page will update if any of the users being listed on it update in the database and the show page works a little bit differently. Now you notice that this is a lot of repetition so probably what you're going to want to do for something common that you'll do again and again in the mount like setting these assigns is you'd want to extract it into a helper function and then put that in your web ex the reactor web you could create a live view helper and uh, make one of the functions in that live view helper uh, handle assigns or something like that abstract it there and then make sure it's in all the views or in all the live views while we're in this file I'm just going to sh show a couple things that i added uh, so from the auth module I put the logged in user and authenticate admin functions here so we can use them in plugs. And also I aliased reactorweb.userLive and that's mostly just for routes and the templates. For example, in this user show page, I've got redirects to edit and back. And here I've got routes live path socket user live dot edit without this alias, it would have to be reactorweb.userlive.edit or .index or whatever. So that's really all the changes that I made to the web ex module. Speaking of these templates, I added a couple of admin blocks and done that in, in multiple templates. For example, in the index, only admins see emails or if something's verified or password hash or have links to edit or delete users. And then in the form, I just added password, password confirmation, and that was it. The router has this new path that I showed. And then this token EX is just a simple wrapper around Phoenix token, which is useful for authenticating channels. And it's not the same token that I used to log in. That was more analogous to the password login and the token itself with just random bytes. And what else? Then the migration to add login token to the table. And that was really it. Hope you found this useful and it's given you some ideas for how to set up login in your own Phoenix Live View app. And remember that this is still all changing pretty quickly. Phoenix Live View is still pre 1.0. And if you're seeing this video a few months in the future or more, there's a good chance that Phoenix Live View has hit 1.0. And maybe the new Phoenix auth generators have as well. And there's already something that will generate most of this for you. In any case, the TLDR is don't use Phoenix Live View for login. You really want to do that from the back end through a non live view route. And if you do need to log someone in as a side effect of something that happens in a live view, such as creating a new user, then one way to do that is create a token, redirect the user to a non live view route, log them in with that token, and then redirect them back to a live view. That's it for today. See you next time.